Welcome to Big Blend Radio, where we celebrate variety and how it adds spice to quality of life. Hey, everybody, welcome to Big Blend Radio's Eat, Drink, and Be Merry show. Today, we are going to talk about kitchen crafting, a kitchen crafting, that's my own term. Uh, we have Chef Ivan Flowers here, who is a five-star chef and also a culinary instructor at Temecula Valley High School, which is in uh, Southern California, kind of east of San Diego. And it's a beautiful area, lots of agriculture, wine. Um, there's even cheesemakers out there, which is awesome. Olive farms and uh, olive oil. So it's a really abundant like area for food, good, wholesome food. Um, but we're going to talk about what he does working in the high school and teaching our youth how to cook and to kitchen craft. That's my new term. What do you think, Chef Ivan? Welcome back. <laughs> uh, good to be with you. Yes, I like it. Kitchen it's craft? A good, it's a I good know. term. Yes. Yeah, because you craft food. You're crafting. Yeah. Cooking is crafting. Absolutely. You craft That's it. it. Yeah, I like this. I And also getting... I, you know, really am excited to talk about this. I know we talk about it a little bit on each show that you're on, but to kind of delve into this, you know, our school systems, a lot of them, all these kinds of, uh, you know, this kind of instruction and programs were going away. Some of them still are, depending on where you are in the country. And um, is that your dog or ours? <laughs> no, yeah, that's Pickle. Pickle. See, they know. Ah. Oh, Pickle. Pickle. Yeah. He, Pickle. Anytime somebody walks by the window. Yep, it's, it's we've got Pickle. we've got that. <laughs> but um, the thing with this, you know, these programs, it's so important that schools hang on to them, and it's not only life skills, cooking, right? But like with, mm-hmm. when we looked at music uh, programs and art programs going away, I was looking at this, going, you know, music was this um, pipeline of getting kids interested in math in ways and creativity and. They were learning things just in and storytelling. They were learning how to craft words. They were, and also building confidence through this. So with cooking, I was thinking about this today. I was like, wow, you know, cooking gives confidence. They're learning math, like music. They're learning science, right? So all these skills come with it. So these programs in schools, to me, are just so important more than, you know, just always, okay, here's your English and your math. I think these sometimes give you these life skills that actually help uh, teach those bigger things like math and, you know, the things we kind of go, do we have to learn that? You know, it's, it puts well, it into practice is what I'm trying it to is. say. It, it's, it's CTE, which is career technical education. And basically it's everything from learning how to cook, doing the math, learning how to do budgets, inventories, POS systems, front of the house operations, serving, all of it. Um, hotel tourism and recreation is the second part. Mm. Becoming a general manager, becoming a food and beverage director, all of it. And we call it 21st century um, CTE. And we do, I mean, resumes, cover letters, letters of intent when they go to college. Um, We even do courses, you know, where, let's face it, you're in the restaurant business and I run a whole lecture with with women. Hey, you're leaving a restaurant at one o'clock in the morning. Um, How do you stay safe? What what, what do you do? You know, things Mm. to look for. So it's so encompassing as a program, a three-year pathway, intro, concentrator, and capstone. And they learn about life. They learn about life skills, things they're going to be using the rest of their life. And like you said, crafting, the whole idea about crafting. It's, um, it's a wonderful program. It's a wonderful school. Uh, we have a uh, um, wonderful woman, Jenny Hooter, who's our work-based learning. Uh, she's the head of work-based learning. And what she, what she does is, you know, kids will go to a casino and they put on Battle of the Burgers, which is one of the oh, yeah. newest events. Southern California. And then those proceeds come to us. So we use them for the program. She has them working at wineries, doing events for seven and 800 people on a Saturday or a Sunday. And then they in turn will donate to the program. Um, You know, she's great. And, uh, you know, uh, we have a great assistant principal, uh, Jessica McDonald, which makes it an absolute pleasure to work there. Who's very into students and very into learning 
and having a really safe, productive um, environment. So, you know, it's, it's a wonderful place to be. I, mm-hmm. I wake up every morning and I can't wait to get there. That's amazing. What what yeah. about you going in your career? Because you've you've got a massive career, obviously, as a five star chef, right? And um, I know you've always been in education. Just even on the shows, it's this is always just. I mean, all of us are just doing this out of education, right? And and have some fun along the way. But uh, you know, as we've interviewed you over the years, it just you always care about people learning. When we've visited you at at a uh, restaurant that you um, were running. The, as you know, head chef, you were really at that, that I'll never forget that day. You were training everybody more than showing off uh, your food, you know? And I, I remember oh, that. I always, had, amazing. Yeah. I always had teaching kitchens and I would say to people, if you're going to come and we're going to work together, uh, you give me 200%, I'll give you 200% back. And I was very lucky where a lot of people that I trained went on to have wonderful careers. I was never about the ego um, it was about really, really training people and, and getting them into, you know, the art of cooking. And, hey, my grandmother did this. My uncle, my mother. Hey, let's do this. Let's, let's experiment. It was always that kind of an environment. It wasn't this is my food and this is how you cook it. It's like oh. I've never said in my life ever, oh, this person worked for me. They always, this were you know, it was worked with me, you know, and I had cooks and two chefs that stayed with me for years where I had a cook. I had a, I, I kicked them out and I said, it's about time you became a chef. Call this guy, call this restaurant, call this resort. They're looking for a chef. It's time for you to fly, you oh, know, that's cool. when, when they were ready. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's, but you know, that's an exciting thing. I mean, and the art of cooking, you know, it is crafting. Like you're saying it's, it's, this is more than understanding how to cook when you go to college. And it used to be that, well, you need to know oh, yeah. for when, like for us women, like when I was in high school, it was um, home economics. And yes. it was about becoming the best wife kind of thing back in the day. Um, I'm not, you know, just, you know, apparently things have changed, which is fantastic because it shouldn't, yes, those skills are really good to have. I really believe if you can learn to sew, you can learn to cook, you know, those kinds of things. You're, you're going to save yourself a lot of money over time. And when things get wonky in life, you need to be able to do things. You know, you need to know how to cook. Like when you think about the pandemic, right? All of a sudden people started to learn how to cook more. You know, the, you know, the cooking channel, the, the food channel and all that stuff helped a long time ago, but it was, um, it came down to brass tacks of like, you can't order out all the time. You cannot do that. And you're not learning, and it's not actually that healthy to be living off of restaurant food forever, you know? No, um, that's, that's why we go very deeply into nutrition. We go very, very, you know, they, they learn how to read labels. We go very deeply, and we teach them how to shop, Lisa. When chickens are on sale for 89 cents a pound, and you can buy a chicken for $5, we teach them how to fabricate it, how to cook it, how to have enough food for the week when they're living on their own. These, these are life skills that they'll use for the rest of their life. You know, mm. how, to, how so, to look at coupons, you know, how to go on the computer and look up coupons where you can save a fortune. It's about knowing what to do with it, right? It's like you could get it. Mm-hmm. Isn't there like certain cuts of meat that are like really a little bit more tougher than this meat over here? Sure. But you, braising. you learn how to tend. Yeah. Yeah. We, do, you, yeah, we do braising, how to take uh, cheaper cuts and turn them into incredible meals. Absolutely. So the, the the teens coming in, the students coming into you, are they choosing yeah. this class to go into the hospitality world, which is amazing that you're having this real world experience for them. You know, it's kind of like you, like an understudy, right? Um, like yeah. protege. Um, are they doing it to go into that world? Because definitely, as we all know, Southern California is like tourism is like a massive market, right? Yes. Um, so is it yes. that or are they doing it to learn maybe to, you know, become even a cookbook chef or, or something like that? A lot, yes, a lot. The industry, a lot about just being able to cook a lot about, you know, trying new foods. You know, when I first get students, uh, students that are afraid to taste a mushroom or I'll do a mm-hmm. confit tomato. And they're like, oh, I don't know about that. And I'm like, really, you have to try it. I don't know. Have you ever had it? No. Try it. 
I mean, oh. I was yesterday I was doing shots of ice cold buttermilk and putting them in these tiny little containers and we take uh we have a sauce, it's a black truffle hot sauce with a little dollop and they were they're adventurous, man. They're like, This is delicious and I go, Not only that, it's healthy. Vegetable mm. cookery. You know, mocktails. We did mocktails a few weeks ago, which are very hot right now. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe some of the mocktails that these students were creating. Mm. It was like, you know, mixology in Las Vegas. And That's they had hard. a blast. You know, it doesn't always have to be alcohol. No, 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 not at all. And and the, also, I mean, we are going into a world where mocktails and things like that were it's becoming a healthier kind of environment. You know, I do love my wine though. That's not going away from me or my beer. It's not, you know, just saying, (laughs) but, but you know, with moderation, right? Everything with moderation. So everything in moderation, everything. And if they're learning this nutritional side, because that's the other part of it is the obesity that we have in the country um, is just Mm -hmm. insane. And it's the fast food, which the fast food is changing. I mean, look what's happening with the fast food workers getting more money, which means that it, now it, it's going to end up being automated. So it's like you, you can't win sometimes. But the fast food itself, I think, is getting a um, – I think our culture is changing that fast food. We all do it once in a blue moon, right? Um, but uh-huh. – it's getting it's getting a little bit of a smack um on the on the behind because it's not healthy and when we look at the diabetes rates that we have in the students even when you go and look what's going on in campuses you know what what's inside why don't they have you know uh, vending machines that maybe have like fruit or cheese you could put cheese in a vending machine i know you can if we can have hot coffee right. come out of a vending machine why can't we have things that are healthier than you know nuts and and you know maybe not always so salted but like there's i know that you can get some nuts in vending machines you can find nuts anywhere around the world i'll I'll tell you something our our um our cafeterias our you know uh, food lunch program which is free to students um every year they make Mm. it better less fat less salt less sugar they have choices there because I read the labels and I go through everything and I know um, Margaret who works there and I'm like, this is not too bad. So they try to make it as tasty as they can. And, and every year they review the program and they go through it. And it's not that bad um, compared to fast food, which has kind of taken over the country. You know, uh, 70% of people in this country eat fast food at least once a day. I mean, that's how where it's gone because it's cheap. And if you don't have the money and you're going on these dollar menus, you know, where $5, you're getting uh, two small burgers and chips and a drink. A lot of people and a lot of families are, you know, it comes down to economics, but you know, Mm. in a country where you can buy a burger, um, you know, uh, cheaper than you can buy an apple, you know, you got to take a look at that. Yeah, and at the same time, right? And so moving towards you teaching them how to do economic, like budgeting to, you know, here right. the chicken is on sale. And and it's also about what's in produce, what's in season, right? So you get, mm-hmm. you, like, you know, um, you know, we travel and pets it as we travel, right? And um, wherever we get to the new place we're going to be, that's how we do our podcast and everything. Um, people always say, we have this produce, we didn't want to throw it away. And I'll look at it and go, okay, what are we going to do with this? And so it's kind of like one of those games. Every time we go somewhere, we're like, okay, let's see. Is the life expectancy okay on this? I mean, I was playing around with fresh corn yesterday, and I've, I haven't done that in years. And I was like, right. Ivan would dig this. I was, I was, um, I, w- I was cooking it. I was, it was, I kept it where it didn't get over mushy. I didn't, I right. sauteed it a little bit actually with some new potatoes and onion and garlic and scallions nice. and different types of onions. Nice. And yeah, I, but I sliced it so it was off the cop. And um, I've never done that. And it, But I didn't let it get it, – it was just – it was still like it, it felt like I didn't even cook it. It had a snap. It had integrity. Yeah, it's yeah, what, yeah. Well, and you know, we grow produce on, on campus. Uh, Toby oh. Brandon, a biology teacher, does biosustainability. I get – turnips, um, radishes, Ooh. tomatoes, mushrooms delivered on a daily basis. And then CT now started a 
full, I think it's like 18 acres, agricultural program. They're planting lemon trees, peach trees, herbs, no all kinds of vegetables. Oh, yeah, it's a huge project. So for them, huge they're project. really going to learn the seasonal. And it's like it's more economical if you're eating by season, right? You can get those deals. Yes. You can get like a whole watermelon. So through this, because I know this from the publication aspect, right? So um, before our magazine was printed here, when we were in print, before like way back when and in south africa we did the same thing we did coloring in books for kids and what we right. did with the coloring books were uh done um with you know historic landmarks and museum stuff and and things around the area so that families and we and we sold them in the it was a fundraiser for like helen woodward animal center in san diego was one yes. of the recipients yes know them very well yeah so we did that and um it was all these fundraisers one was for an oceanarium all of that and but it was educating youth about what was in their backyard. And we did it in different languages in South Africa. Um, and you can never get 100% correct on that. But anyway, the kids started dragging their parents to the museums. I see yeah. there's a wagon in there. I want to go see the wagon. And this happened in San Diego. Um, and it was yeah. in Encinitas, actually. And the parents eventually, kids are great nags. So if a kid is now learning, and I mean all ages, right? A, you, that I'm just saying from that, we saw an, a direct result. And people looked at us like we're nuts about tur- coloring books being for tourism. And it was. It was educating these kids. And the families had to go out and do these outings because how are you going to tell your kid, no, we can't go to a museum that's free? You know? How are you going to say no to educating your kid? You know? So yeah. this this – was what I'm seeing with what you guys are doing, which is a very good example for the other schools around the country, you know, especially the growing part and all of that and teaching to cook is these kids are going to go home and maybe elevate what the family is eating and saying, mom, you're ba- your or dad, you're buying McDonald's and it costs like 30 right. bucks maybe to feed the family. Right. But for 30 bucks, yeah. I could have probably bought um, two meals worth of food and yes. cooked it and it would have been healthier. Are you seeing that kind yes. of thing happen? Yeah, all the time. We do this all the time. You know, we also have kids, you know, they live on, on farms where they have property. They bring in fresh chicken eggs. They bring in, I had students, they have the most incredible Meyer lemon trees and mandarin trees and passion fruit and kumquats. And mm. you should see this produce. I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, and then we say, okay, what what are we going to do? What are we going to how, how what how are we going to cook it? How are we going to make it healthy but always delicious? You know, there are people that have never had a fresh egg, and they're like, the store eggs don't taste like this. And why are the shells yeah. different colors? Well, it's the uh, the earlobe of the chicken colors the egg. What? Like their shell. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, it's the earlobe of the chicken that colors the no egg, way. and then. Yeah. And then they're like, well, why is the yolk so deeply yellow? And why is the white so velvety? And it tastes so, so different. So everything from French omelets to, you know, um, uh, deviled eggs, where it's like, this tastes so good. I, I never liked eggs. Why do I like these eggs so much? Well, they're from fresh chickens. Yeah, there's a huge difference. And and yeah. for them to be able to experience that and learn, I mean, and you are in one of the best growing zones, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, you've got Fallbrook around the corner with avocados and you've got all those. I mean, it's just a yeah, you're in a little bit of heaven there, actually. To olive make you oil. It's incredible. You oh, my, the olive oils. Great, great and wines. They, yeah. Oh, the olive oils. Like, so do you talk about that kind of thing with, with the students about, you know, because it's oh, we, you know, French fries to, okay, instead of, you know, frying up French fries, there's mm-hmm. a different thing you can do with potato to keep the nutrients and, oh, are you going to sure. use olive oil versus canola oil right. and all of that? I mean, that's so big. I mean, it's, we, ba- we, we all bake. need it. Yeah, we cool. bake instead of frying. Everything from latkes to potatoes. I'm like, this does not have to go into the fryer. Uh, uh, you know, chicken, um, uh, fried oh. chicken, we bake it. You know, we bake it. We spray low, you know, zero calorie spray and Japanese mm. panko breadcrumbs. Mm. So do you teach them also about the tools, like how ovens work? Like, the, you know, because as we oh, traveled, yeah. it's, one thing I've noticed is gas stoves. Sometimes people mm-hmm. have these stoves. You put it on like the flame is jumping immediately. And so right. then you get to the next place and it's like, 
Right. Okay. I'm, I'm already at the low setting, but this, you know, every place is different that we're going and we're like, where is the correct calibration of these gas stoves? I mean, that's, that's, it's huge that you say that because we have very high, what they call BTU, British thermal units and where the flame, the whole idea about cooking is they have to control the flames. Mm -hmm. We just did a thing with um, pancakes with, uh, you know, some chocolate chips and different things. And okay, you've got to control your flame. You've got to wait. You've got to know when to flip it. When we do saute, we do stir fry, we do anything. You've got to be connected to the heat source that's coming into the pan. Teflon pans, stainless steel pans, copper pans, all about controlling temperature because cooking is about controlling heat. That's what it's about. And in the beginning, everything is burning at first. And then, because you know how you learn, Lisa? You make mistakes. That's how you learn how to cook. Oh, okay, my flame was too high. You know, and I'm literally shoulder to shoulder jumping around the kitchen, really teaching them. I said, because when you get older, even if you don't go in the industry, but you have a dinner party, they should walk away going, oh, my God, this person's Mm. food. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but it's because it's also giving, right? It, it's, you know, like our, oh, yeah. our friend Ruth, Ruth Milstein on the show, Cooking with Love, her book is about Mediterranean cooking. And, and her whole thing is yes. they need to feel it's it's nurturing. It's it's yes. making feel pe- people cooking with love is about your we're It's the most the uh, it's it's a craft yet. It's one of the I want to say easiest, but it is it's one of the purest ways we can show and give something to someone, no matter what your economic bracket is. You know, even if you only have a few ingredients, you can still do something and make it out of it. And and I love that you're going, okay, we have this, let's create something. So everybody gets to brainstorm, which means that creative mind is going, they're problem solving. And then it's like, let's do it. And if they screw up and make a mistake, it's just not the end of the world. I love that you no. enjoy the mistake no. part because it, that's a thing is... You, God, you know, when I was in school, if you made a mistake, it was like you need to stand stand up and be the ridicule of the class, and that's not a cool well, I, teaching. I, I do thing I, at all. I, no, but I do like once a week. I do Gordon Ramsay because I want them <laughs> to know that when they go into a professional kitchen and you just burnt oh, a, a, a Wagyu A five, the chef doesn't go. It's okay, you know, it'll be all right. No. So I do the Gordon Ramsay, where I'm like, did you did you cook this? What did you, did you, you know, and I, you know, are you from London? And they actually, they love Gordon Ramsay and they love that. And I go in a kitchen, you're going to get that kind of uh, environment where it's passion and it's got to go out right. And by the way, you have to make a profit. So you have to learn about how to, um, what's the (laughs) yield, food waste, what's your purchase price? What did you end up with? How do you purchase it? We're talking about money. You know, you don't mm-hmm. step over um, nickels to make dimes because you can mm-hmm. become very successful at this if you just know what you're doing. Mm. And be focused, yes. you know, and All be focused. Time. I think I always look at that where you go into a restaurant and, and the menu is like a book. And I'm like, you're not making money unless you're, I mean, you can't. If you're going to have 20,000 ingredients, that's like you're, right. you're, you're, you're in trouble you know, it's like, Less how is you, more. yeah, it is. And you can do Less things. And more. Yeah. I was like the restaurant was like, here's your two page, like, here's your lunch here. It, just like, and besides, I don't want to sit there and read it. I didn't go there to read a menu, right? Then here comes no. 20 questions and you should be turning people in and out. You need to move them in, move yeah. them out and to turn a profit. Yes. So isn't that we also We break tiny? down a seat. Yes. Yeah. Do we really? break down. I, we show them mathematically what a seat is worth in a restaurant, what that seat is. If you're turning your covers three times a night, what it, we talk about, we teach them the check average. What is that seat worth? Let's say you're open 340 days a year. What mm-hmm. does that seat generate in revenue to your restaurant? And then we break it all down, gross profit, net profit, you know, operating costs, everything taken out. This is what you end up with. You know, I I, I it's love a lot. this. Speak- but you're te- again teaching a math. You're teaching them entrepreneurship. Um, also yes. just respect for the food. Respect for don't the waste. The waste. The food waste thing sure. drives me bonkers. How people waste food all the time, and it's like no yeah. composting. People that can help. You know, um, of course. See, I just think when they go home that they're starting to look at things different. 
And we when throw you start away sixty percent of what we raise. The landfills are filled with vegetables and potatoes and tomatoes. If it wasn't perfect in the supermarket and the food bank didn't pick it up, truckloads are just thrown away because it's cheaper to do that than to set up programs, you know, where it's picked up and the Board of Health gets involved. It's like, yeah, you know, just get more, you know. We, we We did some shows years ago with Global Green. And they're like the Green Cross, really. Like you've got the Red Cross, they're like the Green Cross. Really, right. that's how they were put together. And they started initiating, and our friend, our, our late great friend, Adam Roberts, um, from Bethesda Green, and, and he's since passed. Um, so they they did these programs where they would go into, you know, community, apartment communities, because it would be like, okay, everybody do solar on your house, everybody uh, compost in your home. So everyone has that, those resources of homeowners and, and, and in the upper brackets, right? Um, I don't know where we are of middle class anymore, but anyway, the, they started going in and talking with the actual apartment complexes, right? And you can have high end apartment complexes. It all depends on where you are in the, in the country, right? But starting to say, look, you've got all these people here and you have all this waste. Can we put composting? And so they started mm-hmm. creating composting programs and, and LA did it uh, and still does. And, and some complexes where here's the composting, here's the recycling. Remember recycling at one point and, and even that, you know, it's still, you still choose about what you're doing because the more stuff recycling is also a process and takes energy. Sure. And not all of it gets recycled, but composting then they were working with the cities to take the compost to use it for the soil for the land for the actual you know the medians where you have all the plants and stuff like that they were using it in their landscaping for the city for the city itself which these kind of programs are so cool it's the same as that importance of what you're doing with kids and getting them to understand to cook you're helping the tourism industry which is you know it's such a cool thing and to see youth um be part of that and to grow into it. Do you see this confidence like stand up with them as they start to have success, you know, get some confidence under their wings to feel like, okay, I can do this. Like I've got something under my bag that I know I can do. Do you see that? Well, that's, that's the joy of, of being a teacher. I'll get somebody who's a freshman and then I'll get them as a sophomore. And I'm like, you just grew six inches. And your voice has changed, and now all of a sudden there's more confidence. And by the time they're seniors, they turn into beautiful young men and women. Mm. That and what we do is we get them ready for the world. I mean, we you know we really prepare them. You That's know, awesome. um, just on the inter- interviewing skills alone, what to say, what not to say. You know, when you're going for the bigger job, uh, all of it, it's all put out there, and. Um, you know, I'll wow. take a summer vacation, come back, and they look different. I don't even recognize them sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, is that you? <laughs> well, you know, but this is cool. So they can go get, you help them with getting jobs like in resumes and building resumes, how to do an interview, you mm-hmm. know, in their youth. What happens if you want to become a, a chef, like you, a five-star chef? How, what mm-hmm. happens in regards to the education after that? Because I, I thought at one point one of the schools closed. Like, I don't know if it was Cordon Bleu or I, I'm going to get somebody. Well, Cordon Bleu did, yes. It, yes. it was? Okay, so what happens from there? Yeah. Because, and then what happens to all those chefs that came out of that program? I mean, that was supposed to be quite prestigious. And so... Yeah, that's kind of weird. Well, what, like, what, what, what the Cordon Bleu did was, you know, they would have classes of, you know, 18 to 20, and then they started loading classes, um, you know, 50 people, and they didn't change the mm. facilities, and people were getting to saute once. I, I believe in culinary school, but also if you get into a restaurant, you know, I say to them, you know, I don't care if you're at McDonald's or at a donut shop, just get in and get a sense of urgency, a sense of balance. Mm-hmm. And then as you, if you're good and you're committed and you're in a kitchen, you'll rise quickly. And um, it's the kind of thing the kitchen doesn't teach you. You have to teach yourself what the kitchen is teaching you. You've got to, uh, you know, internalize it that way. Um, But, uh, you know, I'm a big believer in culinary school. I went to culinary school 18 years after I cooked to learn theory and get trained in French Escoffier. You know, we do Italian, we do Latin, we do Mediterranean, we do Asian, 
um, you know, it's all international and foods of the world and traveling and, you know, because really food is life, you know, food is life. Mm, I agree. I agree. And the Escoffier, I just did an interview with the, the, the Dom's Escoffier in Phoenix, Arizona. They're doing virtual cooking classes, trying to teach, yeah. you know, which I think is awesome, but it took me a long time to get to that term. And, and I'm glad you said that. So explain that term for folks, what Escoffier means. When you when you do French escoffier, you know, a lot of cooking is based in French escoffier because of technique. So you can travel all over the world and they'll use a lot of the technique in French escoffier. You know, the, 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 the refinement of cooking, the respect for the product, the steps that you go through, it teaches you technique. And then from that technique, which you have to learn, you can build your dream. Then you can put your imagination into it. Um you know, it's just it's just a way of approaching it um, where it's very concentrated. Uh, although a lot of French food has changed, you know, you don't need all the butter. You don't need all the cream. Um, it's more, you know, purees and fresh vegetables and broths and vegetarian. But once you have that training, it's like getting a degree. You don't lose it. You can build on it. And that's mm-hmm. what we teach. So... Are you so if someone wants to you say, yeah, get into a restaurant, right? Go and, and do that, get that work, but no matter if it's McDonald's or not, because you're learning speed. You know, the fast right. food will teach you that and how to be yes. polite and you know, all of that, right? Um it's it's all every every job you do, even if you hate it, is gonna give you something even twenty years later you go, Oh, I'm really glad I did that crappy job, <laughs> you know, because right. you didn't at that time you may hate it, but you're learning something. And maybe it's just learning that that wasn't the style of thing you want to do. So it's all uh, like you say, everything is is part of that um, experience that you're going to need. Uh, well, when, I always I always tell them when you're out with your parents and you go out for breakfast, tell the manager of the restaurant that you're a uh, culinary student and go in the back and watch how three cooks. Three cooks on a line can do five and six hundred covers for breakfast. Oh my gosh! Right, and right. Watch line how cooks. they move. Watch how they move. Mm, yeah, I remember that one restaurant you were in. It was like an open kitchen where the yeah, like yeah. the restaurant everybody could watch you. And I'm like, how did you yeah. guys do that without saying things? You know that you shouldn't, yeah. you know, without doing a complete Gordon Ramsay. Like that's so intense, but it also means. Yeah you really have to shift into a focus and, and there's no, um, no drama allowed, you know, unless no, it's, no, we, unless you've got a high flame, you, you know, drama. We, in, we took that restaurant to number one for fine mm-hmm. dining seafood in Southern California. And mm-hmm. I, had, I had to also train the cooks that when you're in an open kitchen, you have to move a certain way. You can't touch your nose. You can't touch your hair. Your towel that you're using has to be impeccably clean. Your uniform has to be perfect. You know, because people are watching everything you do, everything you touch, how you're yeah. sanitizing, uh, sanitizing, all of that, because they're right there. They're looking right at you. It's it's amazing to me when you think about all the little things that go into one dish, you know, one dish that you're making. Like, And so when when you tell them to go into the restaurant, watch the chefs, stay out of the way. Um, right. Yeah, and I tell when Nancy and I did run the that bed and breakfast for a few times, and we had to do the kitchen. Like I, I know from working in kitchens how to walk and and photographing in kitchens how to like stay out of the way. And there's right. a language. There's a language of movement. And by the time you said something, you're gone. You know, they don't even know you're there. And and yeah. so you cannot linger. You can't. You, there's chit chat outside the back. That's why so many chefs smoke. Is that it's you need to go outside. <laughs> Get out. Yeah, and it's well, like we, it, te- we teach that culinary language. Instead of using four sentences, we have them write down something in one sentence that encompasses ten things. You have to be able to speak that. Otherwise you can't explain anything. We also teach them French, culinary French, where they're able to Capstone is able to, before they graduate, understand ninety percent of what's written on a French menu. Not pronunciation. I don't have a great French accent. Tracy speaks French, but from the meats to the vegetables to the sauces to the herbs, and they get it. They remember it. It stays with them. Pomplamousse, mm. aubergine. They just they it sticks. 
Well, when they when they do this, right, from then going from you, they can go to work in a restaurant, build their resume, learn how to interview. Do If they want, okay, obviously get in working anyway, because if you're going to go to college or anything like that, you're going to have to pay for it somehow. <laughs> God knows what's going on in our system that way. Everything's changing all the time, but... Um, it's a good way to be able to, you know, help fund your, your future education. So what would be, do you help them go from high school into further education or do they need it or can you just go for it? I mean, do, do they need to go to another kind of school after this to end up in a restaurant and some, become a head chef? Some will. Some will go to a culinary school. Some will go right into the job and work them, work their way up. You know, it depends on the individual. Community college in California is free. So some of them will work or they'll go, uh, they'll go online to community college and take a restaurant job. We talk about serving a lot. Because let's face it, especially in higher end restaurants, you make a lot of money as a server. So we talk about what it takes to be a server, how to approach a table, you know, how to use that personality, how to know the food and explain it, how to build a check where you're building, I'm getting that second bottle of wine on the table. I'm getting the dessert on the table. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm getting two more martinis. And, you know, you can make a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. But to do it with, to be subtle, not to be overbearing, and never take it personally. You know, when, ah. you know what people with it in restaurants, they could get crazy. Too many drinks or they're getting divorced or, you know, the husband is dumping the wife in the public for them. <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, but that that's what gives you, like, you're going to the movies when stuff like that happens. Right. It's like, oh, right. cool. This is what I get to see today. People watching is great. But there's also yeah. this hospitality where, you know, when running, you know, I think this is something we all learned during COVID is just how little restaurants make, you know, and at the same the time, you can be yeah. margins, but you can also be very profitable if you, like, like yes. you're saying, keep it simple. You can be super yeah. profitable. Like sometimes there's like a, you know, I have a friend who's in, in the industry too. And he's just like, we, we always talk about that menu thing. And he goes, dude, if people just opened up a simple hamburger shop, you're open mm-hmm. from here to here. Here's the three different types of hamburgers. Move on. You can make a ton right. of money versus the fancy tablecloths and all of that. But it's up to right. who you are and what you want to do as a restaurant, right? But he's like, those people often make more money and could have the best burger. If you just focus on having the best burger, you'll be very, very successful. So it's interesting to me that you're teaching all of that because you're helping the the industry itself as a whole to have better people. Because a lot of times in the hospitality industry, you get people in that don't understand that kind of language they don't understand well, customer service no. they are standing no. you know the hostess is at the desk you know as people come in at the, at the you know at the front and they're like okay wait i'm I'm still texting someone or i'm playing a game instead of being 100 percent focused on what's exactly. going on around them and you make you eye get- contact you use their name if you can you walk them to the table you don't turn your back on mm-hmm. them you say goodbye and thank you for coming there's a whole thing to host this thing all yeah. of it. I mean, I've and lived I, this for 35 years. It's it's huge, and it's getting them prepared so that they can actually go out and be successful and right. show show up. Like, you know, so a lot of times, you know, restaurants will just hire, all right, here you go, always dishwasher, right? And I don't know how long that, that kind of career is going to last, but, you know, everything's getting automated. So I think this is the other <laughs> thing is, is the world of automation there's only so much you can do. So in restaurants, this is real stuff. We, this is real food. We teach them how to wash dishes as well, Lisa. I mean, the whole oh, thing. Boy. And then if there's a spot on it, come over here. Look at this. This can't go out to the customer. You have to wash the dishes correctly. We do hand wash. We do hot machine rinse. We've got a beautiful kitchen, incredible equipment. Um, I'm very, very uh, fortunate. Oh man, this is such a cool thing that you're doing. So you're happy, you know, you can tell, you know, being happy, teaching and, you know, then things move on, you know, and then they go off and, and get careers and, you know, or at yeah. least have really good skills, you know, right. and that's something that you can fall into and, and do at any time, any place. I mean, you can go in, do one thing and say, you know what, I really just enjoyed that class so much. I'm going to go into food and at least feed right. yourself healthy. 
and your family. Right. That's right. the thing. Wow. Right. So this you teach from 14 to 18 years old. And yes. they get to, this is like an elective thing they can do and say, I'm going to yes. go into that. So it's not yes. like forced upon them. Like you will take history. No, no. That's they cool. do it because they want it. They want to experience it for sure. Hmm. And then do, and do you teach teamwork as well? Like that part, we were talking about oh. the language, but oh. working oh, as yeah. a team. Oh, absolutely. We, we, we group them into teams. They work together. We change it around. Oh Yeah. Learning, um, you know, of course, the sense of ur- urgency, the sense of timing, mm. um, being able to work together, you know, controlling your temper. If something goes wrong, oh. it's, like you said, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, you have to move on. You, the can't, biggest... you can't dwell on it in the kitchen. <laughs> One of the biggest things is somebody makes something really good and it's delicious. You go up to them and you go, did you make this? And they go, yeah. Did you taste it? No. Well, how do you make something and not taste it? I didn't taste it. I said, well, I did. By the way, it's fabulous. Mm. <laughs> Do you learn anything from your students? Oh, yeah. All the time. Are you kidding me? These these young students with the music and, you know, their whole way of life, you know, um, I'm old enough to be their grandfather, you know, but I learn from them every day. They're they They're amazing to kind of watch and be around the Zoomer generation. They're mm. quite interesting. Yeah, I think it's it's exciting because I think they're learning things. I mean, when I think about what I was, yeah, it, yeah, it's a different world, man, from when we all grew up. <laughs> it's, yes, it's, you know, what I mean, we're still growing, you know, but I think it's it's really cool for them to also have these tactile experiences that are not all computerized and digitized. That there's something oh, yeah. real and authentic, and that's what I yeah. really love about what you're doing because. So much of the world is pushing towards AI and, and all of this stuff, right? Which is tools, but like all, everything being automated, like fast food is, they're really pushing that that's what's going to be what it is. And then I yeah. go, okay, well, who's, who is anyone actually, what, where's, I don't know. I, it's, it's weird to me, but it is, yeah. I know it's happening. Um, and some people may end up going into industries that are creating actual food products, right? That's the other thing yeah. I was thinking about what you're doing is like they may open up something like, you know, the next tea cake company or something like that from, well, learning, sure. from research this. and research and development, you know, all yeah. of it. I mean, there's so many things that you can do. It doesn't always have to be brick and mortar. There's so many options that you can go into. Yeah. I mean, it's online like tires food on sales. cars, you know, mm-hmm. every car needs tires. Well, people need to eat. That's the basic thing. Not about thing. Grubhub. <laughs> no, and that's the thing. It's like, that, that's what I'm saying. As we, we need tactile things in, in the world. And one of the first things that comes to mind that's tactile is food. And it's a necessity. So a career mm-hmm. in food is a no-brainer if you want to always be able to feed yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like being something that people always need. And that is food and water. You know, mm-hmm. so those things are important and it changes communities because if you want better ingredients, that means your community that's growing those ingredients. And if you're using them from there, then, you know, if you're getting more organic and healthy. So that's what I'm saying. The the ripple effect from what you're doing is pretty big when you look at it. You know, it's like, oh, we're we're growing our own food. We're not, you know, getting things tracked in from 2000 miles away and mm-hmm. we're really learning. And so that means. Also, the environment is cleaner, healthy wise, Mm -hmm. you know, their bodies are healthier from that. So I think there's just this huge effect of also, again, um, it goes into the tourism part, too, because your area, for example, huge, huge for tourism. Yeah, it's huge. And people want to taste local things, you know, Mm -hmm. that have local food. I mean, if everybody wants McDonald's, well, then go anywhere. (laughs) You know, right. go anywhere and have the same thing. But they do. They also tweak up once in a while. But I think this is very yeah. cool what you're doing. Awesome, Ivan. Thank you. Can't wait for next okay. month. But before you go, what is on your plate for dinner tonight? What are you cooking? Um, uh, I'm actually doing um, a ribeye that's rubbed in a kind of like a Montreal steak seasoning. And then Tracy does these. She takes mushrooms. And just roast them with a little bit of non um, calorie spray. And I put on uh, good grated Parmesan, and I can't believe it's not butter. 
And then um, really good French green beans, really good mm. broccoli. Um, just, just, just simple. Just simple. Okay, that's that's good. I have. Oh, and heirloom you... tomatoes. <laughs> oh gosh, I, you know that's it. Oh, 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 oh! I wanted to ask you: Is that something you teach? Is actually like, like, the heritage breeds and things like you know our turkeys are being mass produced that no one really gets it's oh, like here's your chicken yes. so what chicken are we getting today there's different breeds of chicken and oh, yeah. this country has forgotten that you know our turkeys and it's eggs. all the same ter- all of it right oh, so yeah. you teach that part like the type of ant like there's you know grass-fed beef is different than yes. all of that kind of the breeds, then corn the fed species. you know finished on corn antibiotics the cuts the fabrication mm-hmm. how to cook it healthy you know, not not needing all the fat. All we go over all of it. I want to go to know, school. In, yeah. <laughs> I want to come to school. It's the first yeah, time I felt like I want to go to school. Yeah, this is cool. Okay, so um, I have a question for you. I have two little packages of uh, dehydrated mushrooms. Now we've used them before, and I think I talked to you about that on the show a few months ago. Um, and we use them in a stew with short ribs like a right. stew kind of thing. It was really good. And we put red wine and it, they came mm-hmm. out really good. Now I have morels and shiitakes and they're dry right. and they say to, mm-hmm. you know, put them in water, hot water for like half a minute, half an hour or something like that, 30 minutes or something. Right. And then they come back to life. Now, anything you would say to do with this? Like I, I've got, I was going to do like a rice kind of thing with mushrooms and rice what would you do with these dried mushrooms? Well, like- two, two things with, with dried mushrooms I would do. I would either put them in a coffee grinder and make a powder and put yeah. it on food and either sear it or bake it, or I would use it to create a broth, then take that broth, reduce it down a little bit, and work that into the rice. The mushroom itself, if you go to eat it, once it's dehydrated, tastes very different than a fresh-cooked mushroom. So I do powders and broths with that. Never even thought about that. Oh, mm-hmm. so you could even make a crust with something like that. Like you of could, of course, sure. Oh, sure. You know, Ooh. put it on scallops and sear it into a scallop. It's it's wonderful. I never ever thought about that. Well, very cool. Thank you for the tip. I think Nancy sure. and I will do chicken breasts with mushroom. Yeah. Ca- oh. Yeah. Okay, her birthday's coming. I'm going to have to do something special. All right. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Take care, Chef Ivan. We'll talk to you All soon. Right. Okay. okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Big Blend Radio. Keep up with our shows at BigBlendRadio.com.